Welcome back to part five of our caravan renovation on our caravan kernel. So in the latest episode, we ended up installing in our bathroom ensuite the shower mixer. We also did the mixer for the vanity basin and then we also did the shower head. Dan finished off all the plumbing in the cupboard behind the ensuite. He also replaced the old lights and put some new more modern ones in. I prepped the whole entire van ready to be painted. So we primed this twice and then applied color over the top of it. We did a mix of white and gray. I primed all the fridge and we actually spray painted that a black just so it was a little bit more modern looking and suited the van. I then also replaced the painted hinges and re-bought some new handles. We also painted the exhaust fan, painted around the trims of the windows and then also painted the push buttons on the doors. Dan replaced our lighting to a little bit more matte black and more modern fixtures and replaced our cover plates the matte black as well. So make sure you keep watching for all the newest additions. So for the backrest for the bed, um, we did upholster the lounge, but we're not going to spend the money on upholstering this part. Um, just for a couple of reasons. One, obviously the cost of it. Um, also two, just being able to take it off the back without damaging anything and then having more things to fix to put it back on afterwards. Um, we've got the time restraint as well, so we're going away in a couple of weeks, which we only really get Saturday afternoons, Sundays and Friday afternoons to work on the van, so it's really not that much time. Um, so I've never done this before in any other sort of fabric, but it's just literally a normal standard kind of black coloured paint, and I'm just going to water that down so it's a super duper thin mixture and almost sort of stain the material. I don't want it to be like too sort of like crispy with the paint being on, so Hopefully that should work. So I haven't primed around there yet. I'm going to do the black first. So just in case I flick bits and pieces on it, it won't actually get all on the, um, the nice white sort of colored paint. So I'll do the priming and stuff afterwards, but hopefully, hopefully it turns out and looks half decent. Fingers crossed, but we'll see how it goes. This is just after one coat. Um, next time, obviously, I'll mix a little bit more in the container because I ran out a little bit towards like here at the end, so that's why it's a little bit lighter. But that part will be covered by the bed and the pillow anyway, so I'll just probably do a thicker coat of that the second time. But touch wood, it does turn out. Hopefully, it's not looking amazing at the moment, but I probably should have tested it on something beforehand. But it's not drying too crispy or anything so far, so. Fingers crossed, after another few coats, it should be looking fairly good, hopefully. All right, so this is after two coats of doing the stain. Obviously you can still see a fair bit of colouring, but I do think it's probably going to need about five coats or so. But it's pretty good so far, like it's not crispy or anything, so... Fingers crossed, it should look good still once it's done. Alright guys, don't you just love when a plan that you were slightly doubtful halfway through actually turns out perfectly? So it's the next morning after I finish staining all the bed head and it actually looks pretty much perfect like it actually does look a little bit lighter probably in this camera from the sunlight being behind but it's actually a really nice dark black sort of color it should look really really good when I get all the um, bed sheets and all that sort of stuff with it but it's still got that nice squishiness that normally the lounge does so it's not too crispy or anything like that which obviously I think the diluting it down with water definitely really really helps so it is looking super duper so nice compared to what I was kind of thinking after the first coat because it was a little bit ugly looking but so yeah all I literally used was a paintbrush water and a sample pot of paint from Bunnings which there is probably like three quarters of that paint actually left um the only thing I did do because I'm so impatient and I just kind of wanted it to be darker when you do obviously put the first color stain the first layer of the stain on it does dry quite a lot lighter and that just made me realize that it's going to take so many layers and I'm an impatient person. So I added more paint to, I think it was either the second or the third layer, which I'll add in in the video. Um, but that actually made a massive difference. And honestly, like crispiness factor didn't make a difference. So if I could go back in time, I probably would have added more paint to the first one and it just would have been a bit of a quicker job. But yeah, overall, it's actually looking pretty darn good. 
So when we bought our van, we did kind of know we weren't going to be taking an extreme off-roading just to obviously some cool beach sites and um, state parks and things like that. But the door was really low and you could already see it's been scuffed a few times before hitting over the top of things. So the biggest job we did was actually cut this and lift the door up a lot higher. It just made so much more clearance and life so much easier while driving the van. So here we actually found a bit of water damage to the corner of the step. It was to the point that part of it had actually hollowed right through where you could see to the bottom of the ground. So obviously with redoing the step, we were gonna to have to replace the base of the step anyway. So it wasn't really too bad of a find because it was gonna be an easy fix, but it was the only damage to the caravan that we found so far. Oh yeah, we'll make it tonight. Yeah. I'll do anything that I feel like I wanna do. I'm Now Dan is just finishing off using the grinder just to cut off any of the little bits of the exposed screws that came through when we drilled in the brackets underneath the step. 
Now after this, we do have to do a bit of a test just to make sure obviously putting weight onto the caravan, it was gonna be nice and strong and actually stay supported, which we were really happy with in the end. The next part is just finishing off the metal trim that we actually took off at the front of the door. So Dan's just put that in here. And then we've also got this part that was originally underneath the van. We've actually kept this and we've just trimmed the pieces off to finish off the sides of the van so you'd never even know that it was removed. So we've just finished that with applying some silicon and then screwing from the underneath. So selecting our caravan flooring, I wanted something really easy to clean, easy for us to lay ourselves, nothing too expensive and not many joints. We decided on doing a vinyl roll because it was just the easiest and the lightest way to do it. Now the color that I did select was this nice dark chocolatey sort of color. Weirdly enough, in all the pictures of all the tester ones that I got, it actually looked really, really nice and dark. But when we actually received it, it was this light color in full bright sunlight. Weirdly though, when we put it into the van, it actually does look a little bit darker and I do still like it. But at this moment in time, I did hate it, but we were kind of too far gone and had already purchased it. So this is the one we ended up putting into the van. Okay, so I have some leftover of the vinyl that we actually had the, um, the old sort of lounge and stuff reupholstered with. So I'm going to make some little like storage pockets. I'm not a sewer, so who knows how they'll turn out, but I'm just gonna use these little off cut bits. And I'm gonna use the same actual floor double-sided adhesive tape that we use for the vinyl and put this around the side and fold it over and then also staple gun it towards the back as well. But this is just a bit of extra, extra seal to it basically, so. Just going to do that in a few sections.
right, so now that we don't have a dining table inside the caravan, we're actually using this old Austrail one that we've got that has the collapsible legs underneath it. It is actually not long enough um, like this way for us to actually fit both of us to actually have like a decent dinner meal. So it's not too bad of a width. It's about 46 centimetres wide. So we have just been to Bunnings and we've actually gone and bought this plywood. I have actually just gone and cut it down to size. So we've left the length at 897. Um, we were wanting hopefully a meter, but we actually think this size is still going to be pretty good without taking up too much room. It does come 600 wide, but I've just gone and cut it to 500. So it's just a little bit, gives us a little bit of room behind the table. Before I continue more, I'm just going to take it in and test it to make sure that 50 is still not too big and I don't just need to take it down to the 46. That's the widest with the already existing base underneath, but should be enough just for us to both have our dinners and breakfast and stuff next to each other. So there's still enough room for both of us sitting next to each other, hopefully. And then the legs will just fold down and we can shove it straight underneath the lounge or underneath the bed. So should work nicely. Coming up in the next episode of our caravan renovation, we end up installing a mirror in the bathroom. Also in the back of this picture, you can see we actually did a curtain track as well for the shower. We show how we installed our vinyl all along the floor. We did it in the bathroom and we also finished off the steps so it looks nice and modern now. I then did the skirting all along the bottom of the flooring. So we siliconed and nailed that in as well. We also installed a new sink, which was just a little bit more modern and the black look. I did the vinyl over the whole entire kitchen bench. We also did the vinyl in the bedroom in the side tables as well, just to look a little bit more um, modern as well. I then cut some architrave to put around our front door and we silicon and nailed that in. We also added a privacy screen on the front door and also on the window of the bathroom for a little bit more privacy. So make sure you keep watching for the next episode. Please make sure you subscribe so you get notified when the video is out. Thanks for watching.